it's here for an hour. That's the spirit, man. <laughs> the seri seriously, man, I'm sorry. I <laughs> no, it's funny because I thought you were late, but it's fine. Now no, I, I thought you were early. <laughs> I'm never early. I'm never Fuck, yeah, exactly. Oh, shit. <laughs> I would love to introduce a very special musician. He is a singer-songwriter from the United States of America and a great talent. He comes by his talent naturally being the son of Yoko Ono and um, what's his name? Um, oh yeah, John Lennon from the band The Cockroaches. No, uh, Butterflies. Oh, the other insect. Uh, Beatles. Uh, he has been a friend for many years and is uh, looking very well. Young and chirpy. I'm very glad uh, that you shaved for me. Or is that your new look? Um, I shaved my face, if that's what you're talking about. The other shaving was, was not for you. Oh. It's good to see you, Alexi. Good to see you, man. It's been way, way too long. How have you been? I've been good. I mean, it's been an odd year for everybody, I guess. I mean, you seem to have changed careers. You call this a career? Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> that... Are you a YouTube host or a... Or a cult leader. You're dressed like Deepak Chopra on the meth binge. What's going on? That is me now. I have no idea what you're talking about. You're, you're saying American things, so I, I don't understand. Us in Europe, You look don't. like a Hollywood guru, like one of those, you know, like a, like a 90s Manson who's trying to, like, seduce uh, rock stars into joining their cult. Join <laughs> With the my purple cult. satin matching hat. <laughs> Well, listen, man, thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview. You, you know what I do with Igudisman and Jew. I mean, are and we seems, allowed to talk about that? <laughs> I mean, it seems like you, you're a bit of a fan. I've received a really lovely message from you recently about what you think uh -huh. of us. Um, you said you guys have done for comedy what Beethoven did for Pilates. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> uh, you are like Laurel and Hardy, but after they died. <laughs> Prostate cancer is funnier than you. Um, <laughs> That's a good one. I think. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the world needs a classical music comedy show about as much as it needs Ebola and Corona to have a kid named the Corona Bola virus. That's really, <laughs> really sweet of you. Uh, thank you for those wonderful compliments. You've clearly put some thoughts into them. And if you would put as much time and talent in, into your music, you could have a career. Honestly, that wasn't me. I, that must have been a hacked uh, Russian laptop. It uh, must have been. You're, you're clearly a, an agent for Putin. I would never say anything disparaging about you two. <laughs> Seriously, your music is awesome and I've been a fan for a long time. Uh, but besides being locked Lies. in, he's because lying. Of, like, be I, you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm serious. <laughs> besides being locked in, uh, what are the other reasons you don't tour more? Are, are you just very selective of where you play or are you just a lazy bastard? Me? Yeah. Why don't you play I mean, more? My band, The Delirium, we play like hundreds of shows a year. Not like, in Europe. Not like you guys. You guys get like airdropped into like an old people's home in the Swiss Alps and you, you know, like get massages for five <laughs> days before you play one show. That's not a tour, okay? You know, taking a private jet, taking like a private jet to Dubai and like playing some sheik's beheading is not, you know, that's not touring, okay? <laughs> Have you ever even been in a tour bus? <laughs> I mean, we tour, we, we really, we play, you know, seven shows a week sometimes. Really? We don't get to do like the nail spa. We don't get our, our fingers, uh, <laughs> you know, soaked before every rehearsal. But yeah, we... <laughs> We, we tour a lot. Were you planning to come to Europe sometime? Well, you know, it's hard. You guys have the European market cornered. Yeah. If you just we, left, we, yeah. leave some fans for us, it's, it's too hard to compete. We got to get our, our Austrian audience going, so you got to help me. Please come here anytime. You can play here any, anywhere in front of five people. Anyway, concerts are only allowed for five people these days anyway, so, you know. Right. Well, if it's the right five people, you know... But you are actually super multi-talented, uh, that's for sure. Um, and um, I think you it could, is, you, it's for sure. Yeah, I mean, you could have. <laughs> I think you could have actually made something out of your life if you didn't love music so much. Um, <laughs> what, what opportunities did you actually miss? I mean, you're amazing at, at drawing. Actually, for our book, um, you you did a drawing of of Yankee as a butterfly here. I mean, we'll we can have a close up of that, um, which is 
Beautiful. Plug the book. Here, I, I can. I got. I got. I got the copy. Did you send me the German language one? Just, just for me. Yeah, just, just to f fuck you up and just to. It's a catchy title. Rett die Welt. Rette die Welt. Sa save the world. Rette die Welt. Yeah. Save, oh, save the world. That's that's funny. You haven't actually even read it because it's in German, right? Well, I mean, <laughs> I've read the back. The back cover is great. It's hilarious. I love that line about uh, "Doch Rettung not." <laughs> That's some funny shit there. Really funny there. That's well, thanks a great lot. punchline. We put a lot it's of effort great. into it. But do you still paint? Do you draw a lot these days? Uh, do you do other projects? Uh, do you do directing? What, what are your ideas? You know, I've always drawn as a kind of companion to music. I feel like when I get stuck with musical ideas, then I'll go and draw something and it kind of gives me a break from from one part of my brain. And then I don't know, they sort of nurture each other. But yeah, I do a lot of drawing and um, I don't know, I would like to direct one day. I would do. I would direct a version of uh, Lord of the Rings with you and Yunky as uh, please as Frodo and, and, and he can play uh, Liv Tyler's elvish princess character. I think he's, that's a little bit typecasting, but I think it's, he could We can do off. like the, <laughs> well, it would be the woke version. Yeah. Let me ask you a super original question. Uh, what have you been doing during lockdown? I've been reading Rette die Welt. <laughs> I highly recommend this book for uh, learning German. What does it say about Terry, Terry Gilliam? Are you insulting him on the cover? No. He, what is he did the foreword. <laughs> Terry Gilliam did the foreword in it. In, 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 oh, in... the foreword. I, I, the vorwort. Vorwort. The foreword. Das foreword. Come I on. thought it was like a curse word. You were like in. I, th I thought it was like you were calling him a vorvort or something. It sounds like some kind of venereal disease. <laughs> um, I don't know. What have I been doing? I, yeah, I've been producing. Honestly, I'm lucky that I have a studio. Amazing, yeah. Where I'm sitting. And so I do everything by email now. People email me their ideas or their tracks, and then I work on them and send them back. So I've done a bunch of stuff. I, I just produced a single for this band, Temples who are this sort of British boys, handsome British boys and talented. And uh, that song came out really well. I've been doing stuff for this uh, psychedelic rocker guy named Robin Hitchcock. And I'm working on a track with Adan Jodorowsky, whose father uh, is um, Jodorowsky, who directed uh, the film that my dad actually produced oh, wow. called uh, Holy Mountain. So if I threw you over a song, would you be interested in fucking around with yeah, it? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, of course. Music has always been influenced by other types of music. This is kind of what this episode is about. So Bach copied Palestrina and Prokofiev copied Mozart. Your dad stole from Indian music and you steal from your dad. So is that a good thing or should we just throw you thieves in prison? Well, look, um, Picasso said that good artists borrow and great artists steal. So absolutely, that's how I. And you should talk, Alexi. I mean, classical musicians all they do is sit around and play other composers' songs all day. I mean, but we credit at least, them at least. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, but yeah, I mean, I you know, originality is overrated. I mean, you know, the coronavirus is original, and yeah, I'm not a big fan of that didn't turn out too well. It's not so much about being original, you know? No, no, absolutely. That in itself is not an accomplishment. Do you spend time thinking how, how new should I sound? Should I should I try something? Or do you con very consciously try to like, uh, you know, focus on, on older sounds? How, how much are you aware? I'm basically deaf, so I just go by feel <laughs> and visuals. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, I mean, you know, the truth is, I think when you do popular you know pop music and you're not doing you know playing dead composers music you do want to find new sounds yeah and there's always um there's always sort of a struggle between keeping track of what you know machinery and technology is out there and making sure that you sort of are open to it and then also not getting caught up in trying to sort of chase your tail. One side of my brain is like an old fuddy-duddy and I just want to listen to like Gregorian chanting all day. And the other side of me wants to hear like weird British DJs code noise <laughs> symphonies. And if the old Ethiopian pop, I remember you, you showing me for, for hours. 
Oh, I do love uh, Ethiopiques. It's like a right. like jazz, like a seventies Ethiopian jazz. It's very good. I mean, that is the good thing about the internet, is that we can find shows like this on the YouTubes, and uh, we can also find so many records that I never ever would have dreamed of listening to, and um, that is the upside. Yeah. The downside is the destruction of civilization and society, but I think that's I think a little price it for to the pay. cool records. The small price. To yeah, pay. it's it's worth it for a couple cool jazz records. Yeah, absolutely. I'd say. Recently, you did an album of remixes of your dad's music, which is very fascinating. For those who don't know, it's John Lennon, and and is that why, why did you do it? Is it because um, you had no original ideas, or just because he was better than you? I mean, what was the <laughs> what was the reason? <laughs> You know why I did it, Alexi? Tell I did it because I knew that if I did something high profile like that, it would get me on this show. And you made and it. I would finally, I would finally be somebody. You fucking did it. You did it on man. this dung heap of a show you've got here. This is this is why. All of my motivation in life <laughs> was to get here. You here today. You fucking. Made so it. I could wait for an hour. For you to bother to zoom me and record this <laughs> incredibly awkward comedy show. That's why I did this. It's not a comedy show. <laughs> it's not a comedy <laughs> clearly, not with you clearly on it. not anymore. <laughs> not with you on it. <laughs> Last and least, I would love to ask you about your political opinions. What do you think is gonna happen in the future of the United States? I've realized that Kanye West is the greatest political genius of the century. If you subscribe to my channel, then the world will be a better place. Well, not really, but it will help me. So please subscribe.